Sahana's crusade to save the land from development. That's coming up next hour at 6. Back to you, Scott. The spray paint's burned literally right into the glass. You can't wipe it off or scrape it off. And you have to replace the glass, which is very expensive. In East Mount Airy, Esther. Oh, Yuki, it was right across the street where you see over there a 12-year-old girl fought off a stranger that police believe is the same man who attacked and raped a 13-year-old girl from the same school. Oh, Esther. Oh, Yuki, it was that woman that talked to me early this morning and gave me the details of, the disturbing details of being attacked by a man in her neighborhood. It was back on Tuesday that she saw the sketch of a rape suspect. She heard the description of a Jamaican, a man with a Jamaican accent. That sent up red flags, so she called police immediately. Until next week, KTVU Channel 2 reporter Esther Miller is live outside the courthouse in Redwood City now with details. Esther. Well, Tori and Frank, this announcement came as a huge blow to the jury. I saw one juror slump back in her seat. I saw, I heard another juror say, wow, when the judge told them that they could go home and did not have to return to court until Monday. Now, the judge would not say why, but he would only say that there were some legal issues both sides had to work out. Many legal analysts believe it's because defense attorney Mark Garagos called in a last-minute witness. Some believe it's a concrete expert named Stephen Gibbler that was called in to testify this morning. The judge told him to come back on October 18th when the case resumes. I think there's a bit of gamesmanship going on and that defense attorneys often wait until the very last minute to give over discovery, especially documents, to try to catch the prosecution a bit off guard. I think the DA objected to that and the judge, in fairness, gave him a few more days. Gargos would have succeeded if he had forced the prosecution to cross-examine his experts unprepared. He did not succeed. Now the DA has a week to get ready. The judge told the jury that they should expect closing arguments to begin on November 1st and last through Election Day. November 3rd is when the case should be returned to oh, turned over to the jury. Some closely watching this case say the defense will probably only call about 8 to 10 witnesses and then wrap things up. I see them putting on four different experts in this case. One's the pathologist, one is the OBGYN, one will be a coroner, and one will be the dog expert, the one that trained the trainer of Trimble. One of those experts had to get a report in late. My guess is it's the patrologist since he was here today. That was a concrete expert. Legal analysts say there is no telling how long the jury will deliberate and finally come to a verdict. Reporting live in Redwood City, I'm Esther Miller, KTVU Channel 2 News. Okay, very good. Thank you, Esther. A lot of time. Philadelphia and his murder comes as a terrible jolt to his fans who are paying tribute to him tonight. Esther Miller has more. At Power 99, listeners flooded the line requesting the beats of Jam Master J and Run DMC. He was just here in Philadelphia in February, now gone. A lot of people that were just devastated. We got a lot of people that were just saying this shouldn't have happened. And, and they talked about how they grew up with them. Run DMC, they were very politically active. I mean, they did Rock the Vote campaigns along with Russell Simmons. They were here in Philly, you know, back in the 80s helping people get jobs. Run DMC were the pioneers that influenced all the rap artists of today. But most of all, this was the group that expanded their audience to a whole different level. And when they made that song, that Walk This Way, that was the song that really crossed rap over to a you know, totally different you know, audience. Abona Hagen runs Philly hip hop magazine, Philly Word. He says Run DMC were the pioneers of rap, voicing positive messages that crossed cultural lines. And teaming up with Aerosmith, relaunched rap into the mainstream. It should not have happened to him. It, it was like, no, not Jam Master J. Today, we found fans in Tower Records buying the old favorites and reminiscing. I think it's shocking that he was the one who was killed because he doesn't, he's not like Tupac or Biggie who you would expect to get killed because of the stuff they talked about. It's pretty much all I listened to about five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it opened me up to lots of other music, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's a shame that he got shot. Walk this way. Walk. Esther Miller, KYW3 Eyewitness News.